if you did this whole catchment, the 75 square kilometers, we could probably get free compressed air as a benefit. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably run a tromp. If you do enough area in swells and small dams, you're gonna end up with surplus water that you could drop vertically 30 meters and start running cars on compressed air. And the Romans did that without knowing what they had on their hands, but they used it to make slushy ice. And the Spanish still have, no? Andalusia still have one. Yeah, yeah, well, the Andalusian Smiths in the, in the Islamic period of Spain, they were running their, their uh, blacksmith forges on tromps at low pressure compressed air. But once you get to 30 meters, you can get to the pressure that will run a, a compressed air car. So India makes compressed air cars, so does France. And, and compressed air is a, a really clean energy because um, the byproduct is air, right? At, at a cold temperature, which is handy for you in summer, but not in winter. Um, so you, you, when you release a, a compressed gas, it's cold. And if you release it with air in water, it makes the water almost freeze, makes slushy ice. And if we have a, a, a peak air event, we've got another problem anyway. Yeah, you, you like, you know, instead of peak oil, you have peak air. Well, none of us are breathing, so we won't really worry at that point. Yeah. You can actually make compressed air from s surplus solar in a desert, which is starting to happen. You could also use it to run, run ram pumps with them. No. You don't need a ram pump. You can run your pump on electricity ah, yeah. or, or even energy. You can run your, your cement mixer, you can run your washing machine, you can wash the dishwasher, you can run every appliance in the house. The difference between the ram pump and the, the tramp, the gravitation is the same, but you have large gravitation and power, and in the ram pump you have a small drop and you take the percentage so to lift can, it, to lift it, up, yeah. yeah. When, you, so, when you go in to get your, if you're a truck driver on a big semi-trailer or, or your little car, and you're going to get the tyre changed, right? He jacks the car up, and then he comes out with a compressed air gun and rattles the nuts off, even on a semi-trailer. Comes out with a, like a, a, a mechanical device on the end of a compressed air, air hose. Goes, blah, 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 blah. Of course that'll juice your oranges. <laughs> or do anything you want in your house that's mechanical. Instead of having electric conduits, you have compressed air conduits running everything, if you want. It's quite possible. But the interesting thing about creation is it only get it from repairing the earth. And, uh, You've got to swale you the <laughs> landscape. You've what got to you need to, to, to produce compressed air? Swales and dams across the whole landscape. And the byproduct of that is forest, wildlife, human abundance, if you want. There's an easy addition from there on in. You've got to swale everything. You've got to swell the whole catchment and put dams everywhere you can put them and you'll have surplus water in the landscape. So it's actually by default, <laughs> by default of repairing the earth, you end up with free clean energy. You don't get it any other way. There are one or two places on earth that have tromps that have been running forever. Rapid Shoot Mine in Canada has had a tromp running for 80 years. You can have low pressure and high pressure tromps. You could make a tromp in the classroom if you want. We could make a little low pressure tromp, it's easy. Compressed air happens. Induce air into falling water and air won't rise as quick as water falls. As it goes down in the water column, the air bubbles become compressed. And trapped. And then the lower you trap it, the more pressure you have because they're concentrating the pressure in it. And then you release it in a bell chamber and put a, a compressed air valve on. Well, the Romans didn't have that bit. <laughs> I reckon somebody made a, 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 a drain pipe on a viaduct, right? The Romans built these viaducts right over valleys, like right? canal right up in the air, and they put a drain pipe on it, right? In case there was a flood, you can imagine them doing that. And they just took a, a, a clay pipe out of that viaduct and dropped it straight down over 30 meters. And they happened to put it through a smaller pipe at the bottom, like, 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 like a, a hose pipe, you know? but there happened to be cracks in the pipe at the top on the bend. And just by accident, it formed a venturi. So a venturi will suck air in just with the, the little cracks or little holes. So compressed air was accidentally introduced to a, a vertical drain pipe on a viaduct. Mm. And someone maybe at the bottom, went, well, there's air bubbles coming out of the water column. 
let's put it through a smaller hose for some reason. As soon as they put it through a smaller hose, they compressed it a fraction and ice came out, <laughs> like sloppy ice. And they went, oh shit, that's cold. How did that happen? It's not cold up there. And the guys stood back and went, hold on, can we design that? You know, and then they went, wow, we can make ice from falling water by putting air in it. And then that's as far as they took it. And they didn't go any further. You need the 30 meters to get the gravitational force. No, no, you can do it on, on a few meters, but it won't be the same pressure. With the ice to form that. Uh, wait, I don't know where the ice forms. There are plenty of calculations in there, but at a certain point you get ice because like open up a gas bottle, you get frost around, you know, if you open a gas bottle, you get frosted valve. It's the same principle. They just happened to discover it and then didn't know what to do with it, right? Except they got ice.